I want to go over like the current women's basketball injury update. Kaylin Bickle still is out with the thumb, but she's rehabbing. It could be like two to three weeks still. So don't expect her back. Jamie Asbury didn't play last night due to a shoulder. I mean, a shoulder in like a video I said like the day before the game with the shoulder, but she landed on her elbow. So like an arm thing, but it was only for precautionary. It's not like anything major, but the good news is you get, you got Jane Van Guyen back last night and you had Eric Porter back. Granted, I know we could tell they haven't played. Erica Porter has not played basketball in two weeks, but she did do she did defend pretty well, and she did make an impact in the game. I mean, and Jana, of course, she just got to get back in rhythm. She hadn't played in four days or practiced in four days. Either way, it don't matter. In the starting five for Baylor women's basketball last night, since there was no. Jamie Asbury was the following. Jerry on a little page bugs, who's six foot one at guard slash forward. Jane Owens is a guard that is five foot eight. Bella Funtel away. You have to play her because of no Caitlin Bickle and no Dre Edwards, of course, because of her eligibility issues still lingering, which we don't know how long that's going to be. By the way, I have no idea. There's no, there's no universal thing to say you're out for so much time with the eligibility issues. Because I know it's a different sport and all. But Bruce McCoy transferred twice to two different schools. And he's now at Tennessee. He was at Texas, then at USC. Then he, from USC, he went to Tennessee. So, well, it's just to be determined there. Bella Funtelroy, by the way, is six foot at guard slash forward. But last, last two, by the way, freshman. I mean, not freshman. Jaden is a senior, but Dariana and Bella are freshmen. Sarah Andrews is a guard as well at five foot six, smallest player on the floor. And Asia Blackwell, who's a five foot 11 inch guard, that's a guard slash forward. That's a senior. But I'd say this. It was not the best night shooting the ball. But there's bound to be nights that you can't shoot the ball you don't shoot the ball well for whatever reason. They were even missing layups. Of course you want to make those. And you need to shoot the ball better once I go over the stats for the game. As a team, twenty seven for sixty three, forty two point nine percent. Three for fourteen on threes, but three you went. They went three for six in the second half on three pointers. So, fourteen for twenty-two on free throws. Of course, you like to see that percentage go up on free throws as a team. They had forty-three rebounds when the opposing team had tw uh, forty-three rebounds. They only had nineteen fouls. In, uh, nineteen fouls. So. That's good. 16 assists. You like to see that assist number go up. The turnovers, there was 11 of them. Granted, you want to lessen those as much as you can. 10 steals in the game. And there was... Let me check on the number of blocks because it showed assisted and, and solo. I'd rather... Because I know on ESPN, this is based on the Bay of Women's Basketball website on the stats. So, I'm going to go to the box score there. Because it the only reason why I went to the website thing, the website box score is because of the points in the pain and points out turnovers. They don't show it on ESPN. Necessarily. There was seven blocks in the game as well so and yeah and a lot uh, intense deals like I said the opposing team was 15 for 43 overall 4 for 9 for 3 which was kind of the reason why they were sticking around a little bit longer 
and 8 for 10 on free throws. At least you didn't allow as many free throws, but still, it's not good. Oh, actually, yeah. There was no lead changes in the game. Zero lead changes. Because Baylor started with the lead about 9 minutes to 2 seconds in the game or 8 minutes. They had the lead for a total of 39 minutes, 2 seconds. The other team had no chance for the lead. Though, granted, it was close for a little bit. There was only one tie score, and that's it. Like I said, no lead changes. Like, points from turnovers, Incarnate Ward had 9. When Baylor had 23. The opponent's, uh, Incarnate Ward had 9 assists. But 21 turnovers and 21 fouls. So, and five, they only have five steals in the game as well as one block. So, yeah, one block for them. So, that's good. Points in the paint favor Baylor in this game 46 to 20. Second chance points. 25 to 2 in favor of Baylor. Fast break points, 7 points to 4. Bench points, and Conor Ward had 22. Baylor only had 13. Of course, you want more points from your fans, but you got to understand the injury situation right now. Jamie Asbury, she should be back for the SMU game, in theory, I would think. I would think so. So... You know, and granted, you know, Kalen Bickle, she, when healthy, she would either be a starter or a bench player. Either way, you're going to have more depth. Oh, like individual players that stood out to me Asia Blackwell, of course, 10 for 13 from the field, 3 for 5 on free throws with 23 points and 10 re. 10 rebounds in a game. A double-double. Of course, some other players. I want to go over the starters. Other starters as well as the bench players. Sarah Andrews had 12 points on 5 for 11 shooting. 2 for 6 from 3. But she kept her head down and played solid defense. She had 4 assists, 2 turnovers, but 3 steals in the game. Asia Blackwell, by the way, had one. I, yeah, actually, Asia Blackwell didn't have any steals, period. Never mind. Bella Fontoroy had 11 points on 4 for 8, shooting 1 for 2 from 3, 2 for 2 from the free throw line, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal. Jaden Owens, she was a thief out there. I'm, yeah, she only had 7 points, 2 for 6 from the field, 3 for 4. From the free throw line, 0 for 2 from 3. One rebound, one uh, uh, four assists, one turnover, but four steals. Whew. Daryl and Little Page Bugs didn't have her best game. But I know in terms of scoring, she was 2 for 8 from the field, 1 from 1 from the free throw line with 5 points. But 9 rebounds in the game. One assist. She did commit one turnover. But four blocks. She came up big on the defensive end. I mean, sir, I already went over the other starters. Now, Jenna Van Gunnen, she looked like she hadn't played for at least four days. I'm being real. And she said, and Coach Nikki Collins said that on the radio last night. She didn't have any points in the game. 0 for 3 shooting. All those were threes. One rebound, but three assists, but three turnovers and one steal. Granted, I know she needs to work on those turnover numbers, but I think that's going to get improved. It's only her first game back from injury. Remember, she played in the practice game. It's been a week. She really played a game, but four days since practice because she didn't even play in that first game of the year. Kendra Gillespie was 0 for 3 from the field. 1 for 2 from the free throw line with 1 point. She did have 3 rebounds. 
though, so Kyrie Ferrer had four points in a game, one from three from the field, one, two for two for free throws, four rebounds. Of course, one assist, one turnover, one steal. Erica Porter, her first game in only about 10 minutes, 28 seconds. I know she only had six points in the game, two for seven from the field, which, granted, you could tell she hadn't played for two weeks a little bit. But two for four from the free throw line, five rebounds, though. One assist, one turnover. Kyle Abraham in three minutes, 46 seconds. Two points, one for one from the field, 0 for two on free throws, one rebound, and one turnover. Yeah. So, as you can tell, it was a rough night for most of the players shooting. But, they kept their head down and played good defense. Yes, I know in the first fourth quarter they allowed 17 points. I know. But, in the second quarter, they kind of, they allowed 13 points. So, 30 of those 42 points came in two quarters. But the other two quarters, first quarter, they only allowed five points. Third quarter, they only allowed seven. Baylor scored only 11 points in the first quarter. 15 points in the second. 24 in the third, which is the key separator in this game. And 21 points in the fourth. So they outscored them every time. The, the biggest difference was the third quarter. They're going to shoot the ball better. There's bound to be games this year that you don't shoot the ball good for whatever reason. So I think they're going to be okay in shooting the ball. They did allow less points than last game, which a little bit less. If I'm being real. And hopefully, like I said, Jamie Asbury comes back for the SMU game on Monday. Or actually, Tuesday, but still. They need her back to get at least one more player back. And like I said before, Andre Edwards, we don't know what this is going to, how long it's going to take because you never know with the NCAA. They allowed only 50 last game, and now they got down to 42. Not bad. It's a matter of. The next game, they do need to get... If Jamie Asbury doesn't come back for the SMU game, she should be back by the Maryland game, in, I would think, in theory. And Nikki Collins said this last night, like, the lack of preparation on the radio by the players, it's kind of, they were giving, like, basically the scam report onto the team and just say, look, here's a way to take... Or like basically like a cheat code for a final exam or a midterm and you just got to study it. Some players didn't do so well in, th in some instances, but or like the player, it's on the players to know the opposing team too and what they do and everything. It's kind of like, like I said, studying for a midterm or a final. And I'm pretty sure she didn't mean they're going to cheat on, they don't cheat on us. I, they wouldn't allow that. I'm just saying a way to succeed at a high level and do well enough to know your opponent so you can prepare for a game. And they do need to work on their zone offense. And she did say that in a press conference and in on the radio as well. So the next game coming up is SMU. Like I said, SMU plays Oklahoma today about 10.30 at Oklahoma. SMU is going to run, from what I heard, either a zone defense or or like high ball pressure because their head coach is Toyal Wilson. Yes, you heard me correctly. The former Baylor assistant from a long time, like, So they got to have some time to hopefully get some players healthy. Yes, Toya Wilson, by the way, she was 
at Baylor from 2013 to 2019. She was a pra- Texas A&M, pra- I mean, the Prairie View A&M's head coach from 2013, I mean, 2010 to 2013. She was an assistant coach from 2006 to 2010. Robert Morris assistant from 2003 to 2006. She was a Michigan assistant from 2019 to 2021. And she's took, she's took over the program. So, as you can tell, She's had some history here, so hopefully the players come more prepared next time and they shoot the ball better and, of course, commit less fouls in general. And some of those fouls were just late. So, in the game situation. And once they get Jamie back, I think they're going to have a little bit easier in terms of depth. They're going to have more depth. Granted, we don't... I would not count on Kaylin Bickle coming back from the Maryland game at this point. She's still rehabbing, like I said, with the thumb. She's out for two to three weeks. So, anyways, I just want to go over what happened in the game. Some, as well as the current injury update. And it's, at least it's not like a ton of injuries now. It's just one injury, actually two injuries, and the eligibility thing, which we don't know about the eligibility thing, but it sounds like Jamie Asbury should be back sooner rather than later. And hopefully she has more days to get better. She gets back soon. And last night was just due to precaution, so like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's going to be the point to subscribe to more by the end of this year or sometime in the future.